Hey friends, this is Michael Bohm with Youth Apologetics Training. Today we're going to finish off the series about the anthropic principle and the apparent fine-tuning of the universe for life. And so with that, let's just go ahead and jump right in. And as you guys can see, the, the farther we go here, the more these factors we bring into the mix the more you realize that the universe had to have been fine-tuned. It was designed. There's, there's just so many different elements in place that have to be perfectly tweaked in, in order for everything, uh, in order for there to be a life-permitting universe, in order for there to be any of this complexity that we see. And so let's look at the galaxy. We have the Milky Way. It's a spiral shape, right? Unlike many of the other galaxies, it's got this spiral shape. And because of the spiral shape, we're able to have life in the Milky Way. Now, if, if uh, you have a galaxy that is elliptical or irregular, just a big mass of, of stars and planets, there's a lot less likelihood of any kind of planet being capable of supporting life. Now, having just said that, the Milky Way is just the right size. If the Milky Way was just a little bit larger, would prohibit life. Conversely, too small of a galaxy, or if our Milky Way was smaller, and the orbit of Earth would not be stable. Not only that, uh, we wouldn't have enough heavy elements such as iron and carbon, which are essential for life. So let's zoom in. Let's look at our solar system. I mentioned a few days ago the moon and how it interacts with the gravity on our planet. And again, the moon is just the right size and it's just the right distance from Earth. And how about our sun? We've also talked about this a few podcasts ago, but the sun is just the right mass. If the, ma if the sun was larger uh, or had more mass, it would burn too quickly. If it was smaller, less mass, well, you'd have to, your range of distance for planets that would be capable of supporting life would be much smaller. And in effect, what would happen then you would have to have the planet so close to the smaller star, the smaller sun, that it would mess up tidal forces. It would uh, mess up the rotation of the planet. Also, a smaller sun would not produce enough UV light for uh, photosynthesis to take place. And so that, that's a problem as well. And, and get this. Our sun is the right color. If it was redder, or bluer, uh, it would also affect our photosynthesis here on Earth. So again, it just we're just seeing evidence of, of a fine-tuned universe, a fine-tuned galaxy, and a fine-tuned planet at that. And while we're talking about the sun, the Earth's distance from the sun also is uh, really important. It's critical to how our water cycle works. If our planet was a little farther away, most of the water on our planet would just freeze. And if it was too close, or a little bit closer for that matter, our water would evaporate, and in many cases just boil. So again, life wouldn't be possible. And going back to that previous series that I did about the ancient astronauts, as we look at the different factors that have to be in place, for alien life to survive somewhere other than right here, it, you know, with each factor I add in here, with each element of fine tuning that we discover, the more likely or the more impossible it looks that alien life could exist anywhere else. And we talked about a few days ago, we talked about uh, tectonic activity. We talked about the thickness of the crust of the earth. We talked about how nutrients get recycled through seismic and tectonic activity back to the surface 
of the earth. Also, carbon dioxide gets cycled back uh, to the surface as well. Again, if this wasn't in place, life would not be possible. And so wherever you go in the universe, you're going to have the same, you're going to need the same conditions for life. You're going to need another planet that has all of these conditions in place. Another property that Earth has is its ozone level. Our ozone, uh, among other things, it protects the planet from too much UV radiation. If our ozone was thinner or smaller, we would have too much UV radiation and plants would not be able to grow. It would be pretty difficult for humans to live as well. If our ozone was greater, then we wouldn't be getting enough UV radiation. And again, plants wouldn't be growing correctly and we would have a hard time getting the food we need. And, and while we're at it, oxygen. We need oxygen to breathe. It's essential for life. And on that note, if oxygen levels were raised by 25%, we would have fires erupting all over the planet because there'd be so much oxygen. If our oxygen levels were lower by even just 15%, humans would suffocate. So again, we, I mean, it's just perfectly fine-tuned. We have a fine-tuned carbon dioxide level. In other words, if, if the CO2 on this planet was much higher, well, then we would have a greenhouse effect in place. As all the global warming people are afraid of, we'd have a planet that would overheat. But if we have too little CO2, then the plant life on Earth would not be able to efficiently carry out photosynthesis. And then, well, we would all suffocate. Moving on, the Earth's rotation. If it was slower, uh, if, if basically if the Earth was spinning slower, the differences in temperature between day and night would be so great, it would make life difficult on Earth. If it was faster, then we would have wind problems, atmospheric wind problems. And again, life would be greatly challenged on this planet. Another factor, the tilt of our axis. Our axis on our Earth is tilted just right. It, it keeps the temperatures from being too extreme. And guys, it just goes on and on and on. There are so many of these different constants, different factors. Hugh Ross has 93 of them on his website. And if I read them all to you right now, I think I'd bore you out of your mind. But I'm going to go ahead and place links on my website to many different pages where you can read more about this anthropic principle and the fine-tuning of the universe. It's pretty fascinating. Some of it's a little bit over my head. And, uh, but nonetheless, it is obvious that our universe is fine-tuned to support life. Romans chapter 1, verse 20, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Guys, that's evolution. That is God calling out this theory long before Darwin's time. And I don't think there could be anything more offensive to God than to look at his creation. Look at the complexity Look at all that there is and then say that it randomly went poof, an accidental chance from an infinitesimal dot in a vacuum. As in, there was nothing and nothing got hot 
and it started spinning around and it exploded and everything that we see, all life, all matter, all energy, all laws, all the constants, everything, the planets, the stars, the rotations, everything was just an accident. No, it wasn't an accident. So I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. Tomorrow we're going to start a new series. And so with that, come out to the website, youthapologeticstraining.com. You guys can leave comments and questions there. Uh, I'd love to talk to you guys. You can also catch me on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. And with that, I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.